Hello everybody, my name's Robbie Alexander and this is my YouTube channel, Robbie Fishing, so I'm going trout fishing in this river. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Righty -o, folks, now in case you didn't quite catch the introduction, my name's Robbie Alexander and today I'm going trout fishing. I'm starting off with a Strike Tiger Nymph in the new coffee colour to see if I can tempt a wary trout. Right now, I don't always say where I'm fishing when I'm, when I'm trout fishing because a lot of the streams and stuff that I fish are no longer stocked with trout like they used to be. However, here is different. The, oh, the size of the trout fell on my nymph. It's got to be three pound. <gasps> a monster. He must have been that long. You probably couldn't see. I can still see him. He's gone down there. Wow. Very first cast. And I've had a dinosaur follow my nymph in. That would be my dreams came true if he hooked up. He was huge. As I was going to say, this is the King River just below Lake William Hovel. Now, the reason I'm comfortable and happy to tell people where I am, for one, I love to share my adventures, and these sort of places need people to visit them because they're just too beautiful for me to have all to myself. Number two, there's a bit of a spillway there, but upstream, not even one kilometre, probably only three or four hundred metres, is Lake William Hovel, one of my favourite fishing destinations, and it has been getting stocked with trout every year. If it wasn't being stocked with trout, well then I may not share the location, but because it's being stocked, many of those trout are swimming over the wall in the uh, swimming over the wall in the winter when the lake's full, and ending up down here in the river or upstream in the river. So that means, in other words, it's being stocked. And because this system's being stocked, well then I'm more than happy to tell you where I am. The King River, just downstream of Lake William Hovel, and I saw an absolute monster on my very first cast. I haven't seen him since. I'd love to see him on my hook. Those big fish, like the one that just followed my line, they don't get big for no reason. They don't get big by hitting Tassie Devils and bladed spinners. They get big by being very, very smart and very choosy and picky with what they eat. Now, one of the reasons that I've chosen the Strike Tiger Nymph is because it's very natural. It's a very natural presentation. This area gets fished very, very heavily. There's a lot of people fishing here on a regular basis. As a result, these trout see a lot of bladed spinners, a lot of minnows. I'm just sort of hoping that by going with the nymph, being a bit more natural looking, I might be able to tempt some of these weary, larger, cunning, smarter trout. That's the plan anyway. Oh, was a fellow, was a swirl, got him, yes. Ha <laughs> ha, he swirls a nice fish too. He swirled two or three times before he hit it. What have we got? A nice brownie by the looks of it. Taking the coffee nymph. Oh, he's a lovely fish. Might get a picky of this one. What I'll do while he's in the water, I'll get my phone organized. Oh, there's another one right beside him. Right, it's getting organised here. I'm taking my, uh, my, my polarised sunglasses off because they make it really hard to see the screen. My phone's in camera mode. At least up here, my phone's in my pocket unlocked. If it makes a uh, pocket call, it won't ring anyone because there's no service. Unless, of course, it goes through his olio. Look at that. What a lovely brownie. You little ripper, don't kick, don't kick, don't kick, don't kick. It's ready. Go. I love those colours on him. He's got like a green tinge through him. Alright mate, not going to hold you up too long. Off he goes. You beauty. Uh, I've got a little bit of an issue with a bit of an entanglement problem going on here. But I'm sure that won't take me very long to get out. Folks, I'm on the board. Had a monster trout about five times the size of that follow my lure before. And now I've just caught one. And I caught it on the Strike Tiger Nymph in coffee colour. I'm using the smallest jig head and I'm using one of the new gold hooks, or the reasonably new now, the gold coloured hooks. That fish swiped three or four times and then he went bang. The little one follow on it, take it, got him. Yes, he hit it. There we go. <laughs> 
Look at that, lovely little brown. I've just wet my hand. See the water dripping off it? There's the evidence. Gee, these rocks are slippery in this river. They always have been. Right, all jokes aside, let's get this fish unhooked so I can get him back in. Beautiful little brown trout. Look at all the spots on him. Wow. He is covered in spots. See you later, buddy. And he goes out into the middle of the river. Now, when I got here, I was faced with a choice. Do I use a heavier jig head to give me casting distance? Or do I use a small jig head to give me a slower retrieve speed? I've gone with the small jig head. I think it's 132 of an ounce, a Strike Tiger jig head. The reason I went for small, I sacrificed casting distance, like you watch this. Massive cast and it's just landed there. That's about as far as I can get. But I can work it really slowly. It's not hitting the bottom, I can just slowly bob it really slowly like that. And that makes it look more natural because in reality, nymphs don't shoot through the water at 100 mile an hour in fact most of these rocks underneath my feet here will have nymphs under them what they do they live under these rocks and then when they're ready they emerge to the surface they grow wings and they fly away and a trout just rose there and that excites me but let's see if i can show you what i mean probably pick up one without a nymph under it now that's exactly this one you see there's a little nymph walking around the end here that's a nymph that's a real nymph that nymph when he's ready He'll grow wings and he'll fly away. He won't scoot through the river at 100 mile an hour like that. So the slower I can work it, the more natural it looks. And that's why I decided to sacrifice the casting distance and go with the smallest jig head. Now one rose just up there while I was talking. I can't remember exactly where he rose though, but he was up that way somewhere. hit Death not strike did he come back did he come back he's following it can i pause it and make it go a bit slower no, he's off it he was on it for a while but he got off he he followed it and then he sensed danger got him <laughs> another little brownie Ooh, he's pulling a bit of drag not as big as that first one, similar to the second one, I think. Now we're swimming towards him, that makes it easier to reel in. Ha! <laughs> He's swimming straight towards me, you silly fish. Alright, folks. Come here, buddy. Calm your farm, calm your farm, calm your farm. Ay, 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 calm down, calm down. Another freckle filled brown trout. You can just see the, uh, the faint par markings on him. He's just starting to outgrow them. Almost finished outgrowing them. See you later, mate. And off he goes. The, uh, there's a big crayfish down there. I can see his claws. I doubt that I'll be able to catch him, but I'll give it a crack. Here we go. I've got him. Look. I fair hooked him. Ah. There you go, folks. I've caught a Murray crayfish. <laughs> Sit that up there in the grass. Mate, let go of it. He's got it by the feet. They are lovely little Murray crayfish. Look at that. He's got no eggs. Beautiful and clean. There's no parasites on him. If I'm not careful, I'll get bitten near the way I'm holding him. All right, here we go. Here we go. Now we got him. Beautiful Murray crayfish. Isn't that just amazing? Took me a while to get him, but I got him. <laughs> All right, mate. I'll let you go. We swiped it. I had a swipe. I saw a fish come out and swipe it, but he didn't take it. Never even touched it. Whoa, massive one just followed me line. Right now, before I make my way any further upstream, I just want to tell you a little bit of a story. When I was at school, my homeroom teacher was a guy by the name of Mr. Harbottle. I had him as my homeroom teacher in year eight, nine, and 10. This is back in the 1980s, George Harbottle. Mr. Harbottle was very religious. We used to call him Father Harby. Every morning, Father Harby would come in and say, what a beautiful morning God grant us, granted us this day. Does anybody need a, a, need a pen or a pencil? And he'd hand out all these pencils 
and on the side of the pencil it would say something like Jesus loves you or God loves you. He was the best. Now I was an absolute shit of a student at school. I was always in trouble. I spent half the time at the front of Scotty's office. Mr. Scott was our vice principal. But I could never ever misbehave for Father Harby. I loved Mr. Harbottle. He was a beautiful, beautiful, amazing, deeply religious man. Now, why am I talking about Mr. Harbottle? Because this was one of his favourite stretches of river to fish. He loved the King River just below Lake William Hovel. Even in year eight and nine, I'd come into school after our homeroom meeting, before we went to our first class, Mr. Harbottle would pull me aside and he'd say, hey Robbie, I went up to the King River below the lake on the weekend and I caught nine nice trout and my, Frank, my son Frank caught a nice big one. Frank's a wonderful man as well. And whenever I'm in this area, I always think of Mr. Harbottle. Now, some of you might be familiar with the name Frank Harbottle. Frank is a wonderful guy. He's got a big black bushy beard. And uh, Frank May was almost the first person to ever be killed by a black snake. Not because it chased him halfway across the tennis courts like some twat in my comment section said last week before going on to call me obese. <laughs> but because he had it in his hand and it was wrapping around his fingers and all was going well. But then Frank told me that he wiggled his finger a bit and the snake went bang and it went bang, 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 bang and just kept pumping that juice in. Frank ended up in the Wangaratta Hospital and almost died. But anyway, Frank's still alive and he's out at, uh, just out of town here, out of Wangaratta, and he's a wonderful man, following in the footsteps of his father, Mr. Harbottle, a wonderful man. As I said, I was an absolute shit of a student. I was always in trouble. I was always in detention or the principal's office, but I just could not be naughty for Mr. Harbottle. I just couldn't do it. I just loved that man. And I went to his funeral a couple of years ago when he passed away. Rest in peace, Mr. Harbottle. I, uh, as a naughty, rebellious student at the Wangaratta Secondary College at the time, I will never, ever, ever forget the wonderful life lessons that you taught me. Got him. Oh, it's a good one, it's a good one. I've had a couple of nice ones follow my line. Look at this. Woohoo! This is the third big one I've seen. The first two weren't interested. But hey, this one's interested. Look at the size of this fish. He's a good old-fashioned three pounder, this one, or at least two. Look at this. <laughs> this one's for you, Mr. Harbottle. I know you love this part of the world, and I know why you loved it. This is why you loved it. Mr. Harbottle, before he passed away, was very much against the anti-trout movement because he loved this sort of thing. And I can see why. Would you look at that? I can't get him in. If I pull too hard, he's either gonna, I'm either going to pull that nymph straight through his, hook, his lip or he's going to break the line. I just have to tire him out a little bit and get him up here into the shallows. He's a big fish. Oh, yeah. This is my biggest fish so far this season. Wow. <laughs> Somebody mentioned recently that they like my videos, but they don't like the fake laugh. I just want to reassure everybody that there's nothing fake about me or my laugh. I am who I am. You get what you get. Warts and all, holes in the shirt. And if I'm laughing, that means that I'm happy. And right now, I'm happy. Even if he gets off, I'm happy. Because he is a donkey. I wonder if I should start getting my camera ready for a quick snap. I might do that, actually. I could nearly land him now. He's pretty much buggered. But I'm just going to put my camera in... me my, uh, my phone in camera mode. Right, here we go. Come on, buddy. Have a look at this. Whew. This is... The sort of trout the dreams are made of. Just gonna lure him in gently. I don't want to rush things or I'll lose him. Oh, wow! Oh my god! That's gotta be nudging 60 centimeters! That has got to be nudging 60 centimeters. I'll unhook him and then quickly get him back. I've got a couple of photos, hopefully they're okay. She whiz has got sharp teeth. Ow! You gone. I tried to... Uh, <laughs> the whole idea was going to put my thumb in his mouth and support his stomach so I didn't have to hold him too much. But uh, folks, that trout had sharp teeth. Look at that. I've got a bit of trout thumb. That was a good 60 centimetre trout. Possibly around four pound. Wow. <laughs> Taking on the strike tiger nymph in coffee colour. 
that was just absolutely amazing. I just finished telling you about uh, my favourite school, the blood on me really. I just finished telling you about the most wonderful school teacher that I had, Mr Harbottle. I dedicate that trout to Mr Harbottle because that was just an absolutely magical time to be on the water. What an absolute ripper. You beauty! And now we hear of cod thumb, a term made famous by Rod McKenzie with his original Cod Almighty DVDs, but look at this. I've got a dose of trout thumb. Now, trout are a little bit different than cod. Cod have only got very, very small teeth, and they, when you get a bit of cod thumb, it's usually superficial, which means it's only the outer couple of layers of skin that bleed. That trout had huge, big, sharp bottom teeth, and they've dug right in. It's going to take a few moments for that to heal. This water's very cold coming out of the bottom of the lake, and uh, hopefully that just stops the bleeding. What a wonderful way to cut yourself, eh? Could it get any better than that? <laughs> I'm having the time of my life. Oh, got him. Oh, I missed him. Another one came down and hit it. They're going nuts. They are going nuts. Off tap. The trout are off tap. Talk about tap. The blood tap's just starting to slow down now. Ten minutes later, I'm sucking blood off my thumb. 45 years old and I still suck my thumb. Got him. <laughs> oh, he got off. Oh, oh well, hooked him and got off. I don't care, I couldn't care. Nothing can faze me after catching that behemoth down there on that bend. <laughs> I'm still on a high from that fish. I don't care if I lose 10 in a row now, I'm still on a high from that big one. My iometer is putting that trout, that big trout, at 60 centimetres. It might be 58 or it might be 62, but I reckon 60 is pretty close. I've got a 62 centimetre trout living on the wall at my house. I caught it back in 1993. It measured 62. And I tell you what, I wonder that trout that I caught down there a minute ago is in much better condition than that 60, 62 centimetre trout, but I reckon it was a similar length. Sort of thinking about taking the claw. Oh, oh, got him. Oh, I missed him. I've had a couple of strikes in this pool that haven't hooked up, and I'm just, just toying with the idea of taking the claws off. Just to make it that little bit more sort of streamlined, if you know what I mean. Just to make the, the, the bait, the food item, it's, as it says it's meant to represent, just look that little bit smaller. I don't really want to because I had the claws on when I caught that big one and the three or four leading up to it. But for some reason now, all of a sudden, I'm getting a few strikes that aren't hooking up. So the plan is take the claws off, make it look like a smaller food item. Got him. Oh, another nice one. Not as big as the first big one, but I reckon he's the second biggest today. Oh, removing the claws just may have worked. Oh, look at the size of this fish. Where am I going to land him? I'm going to try and get him up here into this shallow water. Now, hopefully, my GoPro battery doesn't die. Last I looked, it was on about 13%. Look, he's not as big as the big bloody four pounder that I got before, but he's still a lovely, lovely, lovely trout. Have a look at this. Oh, he snapped me line. Look at that. He got off. No. Hey, where the top half of my rod go? Now, we've got a bit of a dilemma. I'm missing half a fishing rod. Folks, I've got to find the other half of my fishing rod or I've got to walk back to the car that way. Ugh, that was such a lovely trout. Can I find the fishing rod? Well, after 30 to 40 minutes of swimming, wading and walking the banks looking with my polarizers, there's no sign of the top half of that rod. That sucks, but shit happens. I could go to the doctor tomorrow and get told I've got cancer and four weeks to live. Thankfully, all I've managed to do is lose the top half of a fishing rod. Thanks very much for watching, folks, and thanks very much for Victorian Fisheries for stocking so many trout into Lake William Hovel every winter, which are dispersing into these regions. If you've liked this video and want to give it a big fat thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.